No TV for that guy at all, David. All right, President Obama has been facing a lot of criticism in his handling of the Gulf oil crisis, not only for showing a lack of emotion, but for failing to do much beyond pointing the finger at BP. So has our Commander-in-Chief failed the test of leadership. Uh, joining us now for a fair and balanced debate are Alicia Menendez, senior advisor at NDN, a progressive think tank, and Stephen Crowder, comedian and Fox News contributor. Stephen, what about it? How has the Commander-in-Chief been doing? I mean... Emotion, right? A little emotion. Well, you mean we want emotion from me or from the president? Yeah, I'll take a little emotion <laughs> sort of from you right now. Me there. Um, you know, I, I don't think it's fair to politicize this and blame the president for the oil spill. I think both sides have sort of politicized it falsely, so I think we could agree on that. Um, what I do hate is that he's politicizing it with a false narrative, um, possibly by shutting down offshore drilling. I think that would be catastrophic uh, for the environment, both in the short and the long run. So I, I would hate to see that happen. Wait a minute. Did you guys switch sides? <laughs> Hold on a second. Yeah. So what do you think? Do you, do you like the amount of emotion he's, he's showing? I, said, I, mean, I remember the speech a couple of days ago where he said, you know, my daughter walked in the room and said, Daddy, did you fix the, fix the spill? Did you stop the spill yet? Um, a little more, no? Uh, perhaps, listen, this is no drama, Obama. We knew what we were getting when we elected him into office. And at the end of the day, his leadership, I think we can both agree, is going to be based on the results that he has. And I think most people want to see this problem fixed. People don't want to see it politicized. And his leadership will be judged by how swiftly he's able to do this. And, um, and how and swiftly is he doing it, Alicia? I think he's doing everything. Ken, listen, no one has more to lose here than Barack Obama. In many ways, his entire presidency is riding on the optics of this. And so I think it's important that he works with members of both parties to get this done. Well, he hasn't worked with members of both parties for a long time. And um, you're right, he's not very swift with this. But I think it's sort of shining a light that, hey, you know what? Barack Obama doesn't know how to run an oil industry. He doesn't know how to run a car industry. And maybe he should step back. Now, there isn't, this isn't a problem of no regulation. There's plenty of regulation on the books with the oil industry. The reason they're drilling so far offshore, which is, of course, less safe, is because they're not allowed to drill onshore or in shallower waters. So you want them to Oh, let's, 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 let's cut you guys off. We have to get to topic two. Federal oh. debt is big of a concern to the American people mm -hmm. as terrorism. Um, but with Obama, we're spending like crazy. It's becoming worse and worse. We've been spending like crazy for 11 years. Now, let's not pretend this is Barack Obama specific. Listen, I think we're spending what we need to spend in order to get our economy back on track to make it work for everyday people to get wages and incomes up. And after we have done all that, after we know that we are beyond the shade of doubt uh, at full recovery, then we can start talking about our debt. But until then, Stephen, of course, Stephen, let me just preempt you here. Thirteen trillion dollars in debt that happened right. last week. We really haven't spent at this accelerated, accelerated rate for 11 years. No, it's certainly not even comparable, and it hasn't worked in, in the past, and uh, it's not working right now. All, all of the employment you're seeing is in the, the government sector, the public sector, not the private sector. This is sort of, I can understand why Barack Obama, President Obama, feels like he needs to spend. It's sort of like that class president who ran Fort and promised his kids, I'm going to get you free ice cream in the cafeteria, and now he realizes he has to do it. But the ice cream costs trillions of dollars. Except that it's not ice cream. We're talking about spending money on I thought we were literally talking about ice cream. Raging war. So my question to you is if you don't mm -hmm. want to spend like where would you cut this money? Where would you stop spending? Where I would cut the money in a multitude of areas, uh, not the military. Would be the one area where and that's I wouldn't worry. One of the two has. biggest areas um, we spend in. Well, it's one of the two biggest. What would be the other biggest area? The other biggest area would, would be. be well, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Um, the common misconception. Would it be wise, knowing how the American people feel about debt, to go out there and spend 862 billion dollars on a stimulus? Listen, I don't think there's anyone who has any misconception about how the American people feel about this. But I think people also want to see their wages go up, their income go up. Go up. People who are looking for jobs want to be able to has find jobs, and Steve, people want to feel safe Steve, and secure. We got, numbers last, uh, we got numbers on Friday showing right. us that 431,000 new jobs created, 411,000 uh, were in the census. Absolutely. And, of course, there's a new Harvard study that shows increase in spending oftentimes decreases jobs in the private sector because not only does the government create makeshift jobs, but they end up taking on products that the private sector uh, would have taken on. Anyway. I have to leave it here. Alicia Menendez, thank, thank you very you much. So much. Stephen Crowder, thank you guys thank very you. much for coming in real early in the morning. <laughs>